Hello everyone, in this tutorial, we're going to dive deep into HANA, the infinite canvas for interactive design and spline. We'll cover the fundamentals of liquid glass, including stackable translucent layers and 3D projections. You'll learn how to build perspective-based layouts like carousels and portals, as well as the foundations of responsive design with layouts. I'll show you how to export your creations as high-res images and videos, or even embed them into websites and apps with real-time interactions. In this tutorial, we will explore how to create these designs. Let's first explore how Liquid Glass creates UI that feels organic, reactive, and alive. We'll begin with a simple interactive switch inspired by the latest iOS design language. Let's see how to build it in practice with HANA. First, select the frame tool and draw a frame of about 960 by 540 pixels. Adjust its background color to white. Select the rectangle from the toolbar and draw a rectangle 160 by 70 pixels in size. Increase its corner radius until it's fully rounded. Adjust the fill to gradient and open the gradient panel. Rotate the gradient by 90 degrees. For the first stop, use a brighter gray. And for the second, a darker one to add depth to the shape. Now align the object to the center of the frame by clicking the alignment tools, horizontal center and vertical center. Draw another rectangle that is 96 by 54 pixels and make it fully rounded too. Center it vertically and place it at 4, 5, 7 on the x-axis. Make the fill a gradient. Rotate it by 90 degrees, keeping both stops at full white for now. Add an effect and change it to liquid glass. Add a new state to the rectangle. While this second state is selected, enlarge the rectangle to 146 by 88 pixels. Turn down the gradient to around 20%. Make the first stop slightly darker on the color picker to add depth to the surface. Now comes the fun part. Open the liquid glass panel and start tweaking its values. Turn down the blur to zero to create a clear look. To make the optical properties of the glass thicker, turn up the distortion to around 30 and the depth to 12. Decrease the magnification to negative 100 to distort the shapes beneath. Increase the profile thickness to make the distortion more even around the edges. You can use offset to adjust the positioning of the distortion, chromatic aberration, and blur effects for even more precise results. But we'll leave those at zero for this switch example. Let's also add a new effect, a drop shadow. Offset it by eight, increase blur to 20, and reduce the opacity to 10%. Now let's add some specular highlights by adding a new effect layer with an inner shadow. Offset it to negative five, set blur at 6%, and make it white with around 40% opacity. Add a final touch by creating another inner shadow layer with an offset of one on both X and Y axes, with blur at zero. Set the opacity to just 15%. Perfect. Our liquid glass effect is ready. Now let's add states to our objects. First, make sure that on the base state of the knob, all effects are set to 0% so they're not visible when the knob is in its rest state. Now group the knob, add a state to it, and on the second state, move it to 504 on the X axis. Next, select the rectangle underneath and on a new state, adjust its colors to a slightly brighter green on the first stop and a bit darker on the second.
Now that we have all the states in place, it's time to make everything interactive. Let's make the base rectangle our main interaction driver. Add an event to it and change it to mouse hover. Add a transition action and select the knob as the target. For the transitions, select base state to state and set the transition mode to spring for a more organic feel. Select the group object and make sure we can click through the knob by turning the pass through mode on in the events section. This way, the base rectangle will catch the mouse events above the knob. Now let's test our interaction. We got the hover effect working, perfect. Select the rectangle again and add another event. Select mouse down for this one. Add a transition action where the target is the rectangle itself. Transition it from base state to state with spring again. Don't forget to set the mode to toggle so we can switch between the two states with each click. Add another transition action, expand it, and select the group. Adjust the mode to toggle as well and transition from base state to state via spring again. And that's it. Our interactive liquid glass switch is ready to be played with. HANA is also a great solution for presenting UI design work with more depth and dimensionality. You can import existing components as SVGs, build them directly in HANA, or start from a template linked in this video. In this example, a UI layout is animated in perspective using 3D projection, while some components are elevated using the depth feature. Liquid Glass also supports multiple stackable layers, letting you create richer, more complex visuals. When combined with 3D projections, the effect becomes even more dynamic, as each layer bends light independently in space. Let's take a look at how this scene was built. Create a new frame of around 960 by 540 and set its background color to black. Inside this frame, draw a rectangle shape at around 250 by 250 pixels and snap it to the center. Adjust the corners to 64 pixels for a smooth corner radius. Add a gradient, rotate it by 90 degrees, and create a transition from bright gray to full black at 0% opacity with a smooth transition. Slide the second stop slightly up for a more faded effect. To simulate highlights, add an inner shadow with a white color. Set the offset to negative one on X and one on Y. Keep the blur at just two. And set opacity to around 60%. Duplicate this rectangle twice and group all three rectangles together. Select the group and turn on 3D by setting it to yes. Rotate it to a tilted angle. 23 degrees on X and negative 32 degrees on Y works great for this case. You can also increase the perspective for a more wide angle effect. Around 580 seems perfect. We set 3D on the group, but to manipulate individual objects, select the second rectangle and turn on 3D for it too. Let's increase its depth to 100 to elevate it from the other shapes. Do the same for the third rectangle, setting it to 200 for a layered effect. Now offset the position of the whole group to center the composition. Here comes the fun part. Select all the rectangles and add a liquid glass effect to them in the effects panel. This way you can simultaneously tweak the effect on all selected rectangles. Adjust the values until you're satisfied with the result. 20 for distortion and 50 for depth looks good. Another quick tip, you can animate the main group using the same approach we did for the switch by adding a start event and transitioning between two states with different 3D rotation and position values. Now you can embed this scene 
as an interactive piece on a landing page by copying the embed code and pasting it into your site builder, or you can export the result as an image or 4K video. I recommend experimenting with custom shapes and text as they pair beautifully with liquid glass. In this scene, the liquid glass effect was directly applied to the text and some custom shapes around them. In this other example, a simple shape is added above the text layer with a mouse follow event. To create this magnifying effect, make sure to increase the magnification and add some aberration for an even more realistic result. Chromatic aberration can be applied either just at the edges of the glass or across the entire surface of the shape by toggling it to fill mode. In this section, we'll explore further possibilities of 3D projection. This feature allows you to create UI and design elements with perspective and depth, perfect for building portals, 3D carousels, or simple shapes in space. 3D projections unlock new creative potential in interactivity, motion, and design, giving you precise visual control over your final results. Portals open dimensions into a new world. You can replicate this effect by creating a frame and preparing your composition within it. In this case, there are about a dozen polygon shapes stacked inside the frame. By turning on 3D for the frame and adjusting its rotation, you can bring the card into perspective. To create the portal effect, you need to offset the depth values of objects inside the frame. In this example, each polygon's depth value was incrementally decreased by 32, 64, 96, and so on. This creates an opening, a portal, into the composition. For this effect, make sure that clipping is set to yes on the frame, otherwise the depth perception of the portal won't work. For portals, adding motion further enhances depth perception. In this example, there's a simple mouse hover event with a spring transition between two 3D rotations for an organic bouncy effect when hovering with the mouse. A 3D carousel is a great way to showcase videos, images, or vector shapes. You can make it fully interactive or use it as a motion piece. This scene was set up with rectangles arranged in a circular shape. Imagine looking at your scene from a top-down view first to create your composition. The main group was then viewed from a tilted perspective via 3D. Each individual rectangle was rotated up by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Back face rendering was turned off so the rectangles are only visible from one side and disappear when they rotate to the back. For the foggy blur effect, the group of rectangles was duplicated. The back face was enabled on these duplicates, which were rotated in reverse to ensure only the inner part of the cylinder remains visible. A layer blur was added to each rectangle and the image's opacity was reduced to 40% for a faded look. To create motion, the z-axis was animated on the main group to rotate the carousel. A bonus tip. You can also upload videos to these rectangles instead of images. Now let's bring all these pieces together and explore the powerful layout capabilities within HANA. This feature enables you to create cleaner, more organized designs using horizontal and vertical layouts, masonry grids, and more. To apply a layout, simply frame your unarranged shapes and click the plus icon in the layout section on the side panel. There you can adjust the alignment mode from horizontal to vertical or even wrap. You also have the option to set horizontal and vertical sizes of objects to fill, fit, or fixed. You can easily adjust the gap and padding for your layout as needed. Objects within the layout can be rearranged with simple drag and drop. You can also adjust the alignment distribution and set it to auto, which will evenly distribute all items inside based on the parent frame size. Nested layouts provide an excellent way to organize more complex compositions, as demonstrated in this Bento UI kit example. 
For creating a masonry layout, use shapes with various heights and enable the masonry option in wrap mode. You can also combine auto layout with 3D projections to create sophisticated UI visuals with dynamic motion and interactivity, as shown in this example. That's a wrap on our overview of liquid glass, 3D projections, auto layout, and all the other powerful features you can explore in HANA. Everything you make can be embedded into real-time, production-ready websites, exported in 4K for polished motion graphics, or even used in interactive presentations. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to follow and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. You'll find helpful resources in the description. And if you end up creating something cool, tag us. We'd love to see what you come up with. See you in the next one.